Getting stuck is a common experience of programmers, and when you do get stuck, it can be hard to know how to move forward. You may be stuck because you're encountering bugs, or you may also get stuck because you have a task to complete that seems huge and you don't know how to approach it. Regardless of what the reason is for why you're stuck, there are great strategies out there for helping you to gain momentum when you're having a hard time getting the wheels turning, and I wanted to share with you my two favorite strategies for getting unstuck today. So here we go. Okay, so my two favorite strategies are called number one, the slump breaker, and number two, the breakdown. So let's go ahead and start with the slump breaker. So I was first exposed to this idea of the slump breaker when I was in a coding boot camp, and I had a classmate who had been a collegiate soccer player at Clemson University. And we were talking one day about how easy it is to get stuck programming, and he mentioned one thing that helped him when he was playing soccer, and that was this idea of the slump breaker. And so the idea of the slump breaker for my friend was that when he was a college soccer player and he was having a bad game, he would try to find a slump breaker, and that was one small thing that he could do right. So let's say he's having a terrible game, he just wants to make one good pass, right? And so the same concept can apply to programming. So if you're stuck, you need to just get one feature working. Or if you have a bug, you need to just fix that one bug and maybe move on to the next error message. There are a lot of reasons why the slump breaker is helpful. Number one, it builds confidence. So if you're really stuck on something or you have an error message that you just can't seem to figure out, you can begin to doubt yourself and that imposter syndrome can start to creep in and you can begin to wonder if you're even cut out to be doing this in the first place. But when you can get one small thing working, you begin to build that confidence and you begin to feel like, hey, maybe I can do this. You also build momentum. So once you get one thing working, you're a lot more likely to continue on and to get other things working because you're motivated, you're encouraged, and you're seeing things come together. When nothing's working, you wanna quit, but when something's working, you wanna keep going, and that is really powerful. So the slump breaker builds confidence and builds momentum, and that's why I love it. But in order to have a slump breaker task, you need to do something else. And that brings us to our second point. And that second point I mentioned is the breakdown. So what is the breakdown? The breakdown is breaking down a big task into small actionable steps. So the breakdown kind of addresses one of those problems I mentioned at the beginning, which is that a lot of times when you have a project or a, a big feature to do, it can seem kind of insurmountable because you're just kind of standing at the base of the proverbial mountain, looking up and wondering how you're gonna get to the top. And so when you break down a task, you begin to have a set of to-dos that you can kind of knock out one by one. A lot of times in programming, this takes the form of to-do comments, and I love to-do comments. I love breaking tasks down as well for a lot of reasons, but here are a few. Number one, the breakdown forces you to think systematically. So I would say the majority of programming is just rewiring your brain to think like a computer, which is to say, to think systematically. And so doing these kind of to-do comments or breakdowns is helpful in kind of a meta sense and getting your brain to align more with the computer and think in terms of a set of actionable steps. More tangibly though, it's less intimidating. So I know for me personally, I love having a list of tasks that I just need to do that are pretty discreet and small. And so I can kind of mark those off and feel good about myself. Like I said, in my last point, you build momentum and I think that applies here. So when you're checking things off, you're feeling good, you're motivated, and you're more likely to keep going. But the question may be, how do I even do that, right? So it may be hard to even know where to start. So I'll give you kind of a trivial example. So let's say that your task is to build the authentication piece for an app. Let's say you're working on the front end. So you need users to be able to log into your app. So where would you even start with that? So at a very high level, you know, number one, you're going to need a login form. So you'll probably need an input for email and an input for password. You'll need to be able to record those values. And then when the user clicks submit, you'll need to send those values in the body of an HTTP request to some kind of backend that is going to do the authentication piece for you. And then you'll need to handle the response when it comes back that probably has a token in it or something like that. So if I were breaking that task down at this level, I would say maybe build login form, build submit action and handle API response. But you could go even more into detail. So you could say build email input, build password input, link those together in a form, link the button action to the form, and then you could say, this is the specific API endpoint, 
that we're going to hit. And then this is the type of token, whether it be JWT or something else, maybe a cookie that we're going to get back. And so you can kind of go into ever increasing levels of detail. And this is just a trivial example, but I hope I'm kind of giving the impression of how I would break down any given task and try to make it a little bit more approachable. So those are the strategies that I use to move forward when I'm having a hard time knowing where to even start. I hope you found them helpful. If you're still here, you'd probably like the rest of my channel, which focuses on software engineering and self-employment. So consider subscribing. Regardless, thanks so much for watching to the end. Remember, stay hungry, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next one.